Whether I'm on or off the stage, I am the headliner. So tonight I'm performing in Mangoes and Marietta and I'm pissed because nobody did what they were supposed to do. I have been running around all day. My original background singers I had to replace at the last minute. It's been problem after problem. And then I show up to the venue and there are no mics. I'm stressed, I'm stressed. And to be completely honest, I'm pissed. P-I-S-T, pissed, okay? Like, how, do, how are we supposed to do a sound check and we ain't got no mics? Where they do that? Hey, can you and Amir come outside and meet me at the door? All right, all right, I'll see y'all in a second. But in typical DJ fashion, I am a professional, okay? So I pulled my background singers over to the side just to let them know what was going on so nobody was out of the loop, but I am really upset because the band, they have to now go get their own sound equipment, which is going to take an hour out of my show, and now I have to completely restructure my set. So they'll be back in about 10, 15 minutes, but y'all just wanna chill. Like I said, I didn't, I hate that I had y'all here early. I didn't know that they didn't have all the now my background singers, they were chilling, but me, I'm literally shitting a break. Literally. I'm not happy in any capacity. This should have been taken care of. I don't operate like this. I don't run my business like this. Same teacher, same. I'm gonna stay right here. That's true. I don't know how this performance is gonna go. I haven't said a word all day. So hopefully we got some good vocals in there, but at the same time, I don't know. I usually try not to be stressed before I get on stage, but today it's a different, it's a different feel. Finally, after 35,000 years, darling, uh, the band finally shows up with the sound equipment and the show finally can begin. Some of my friends are starting to roll in, some of the people that came to see me are starting to roll in, and I'm ready to put on a show for y'all. <laughs> When I put my sets together, I like for the audience to sing with me. So I try to pick songs that everybody knows, but also fuse some of my own original material in with. So I have a single out. My single is called Voice Man. And I'm going to go piece of that that's cool with y'all. That's cool? Yeah. One time in the end of the day, so I go like this. <laughs> I was a little 
disappointed that nobody from the group came. I was thinking y'all were coming. I wanted to hang with y'all. When I perform, it's an experience, okay? It's like a house party. The only show where you can sing off key and dance off beat. Even though nobody from the group came, I was grateful for the people that did come to celebrate with me. What were we celebrating? Life, love, divorce, bar mitzvahs, whatever you want to call it, we were there to celebrate you. You got my message and I know you ain't sleep I know you saw me calling I know you got my message I know you I may be on the way up in Atlanta, but just like trunks be popping in Houston, so am I. I just want to just take this stuff out. Just take some stuff out. My lawyer is going to, they're handling all that right now. So as soon as they get all that over, I will definitely have my, either the insurance company going to call or the lawyer to call whoever. I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So this is my first time seeing the vehicle since the wreck. It's the back of the car, the side, hit the pole, the back seat, side airbag, side curtain airbags, popped, the back seat. It's my first time seeing the car since it got a wreck. Yeah, that's what it looks like on the inside. Old Infinity, old girl, she's gone. She's gone. She's a goner. I really didn't know how bad it was until I actually saw it. And I was floored. I felt like I shouldn't even be here. <sighs> Gonna miss old faithful. But God has bigger things in store for me. So we'll see what happens. RIP Infinity. Um, so I decided to call my mom and have a conversation, a chat with her and let her know that everything is good to go. Everything is done. And I'm finished with that chapter. Hello. That's all she wrote. Okay. So I got, I'm gonna send you pictures of it. Okay. Show you what it looks like now, but it just looks like it just fell to pieces. Like, mm. I can see where people said, I'm lucky to be alive. Cause that car looks like I shouldn't be. I'm trying to tell you, I'm just, you just describing it to me and then telling me that you did a 360 and then hit a pole was enough. I, I actually I actually know I blacked out. I blacked out when I hit the pole and it's probably the airbags that made that happen from what I see, you know. And then once I hit the once I hit the pole, I just thought I was I thought it was over. I even said I was dead. So it is what it is. I'm, I'm blessed and happy and thankful to be alive. And um, we'll get past this. We'll get through it. Absolutely. 
But all right, mother, I love you. I will talk to you later. I will send you the pictures. I will show you what happened. And I hope to see you soon. All right, talk to you later. Okay. Love you, goodbye. You may want to know who invited me, but once I'm in a room, I always own it. All right, so I'm a young, 30-year-old, gender non-conforming human from New Orleans, Louisiana. I've been in Atlanta about two and a half years now, I think. Um, came here during COVID. I was working from home, bored, and just felt like I was bored. I wasn't doing anything. It felt like I was in a slump. Um, I applied for some jobs, sent my resume out to a few organizations because I do work nine to five in nonprofit. And this what happened. I got that phone call. I picked my house up and I moved it right here to Atlanta. Since being in Atlanta, I have done multiple events. One of my first events here was the Red Dress Party. You probably can't tell because I was a little plus size model then. I lost a little weight now. But the party was so much fun, y'all. Like, I had an amazing dress, I had a good time. Even for my first event out here, the turnout was like, I was happy and amazed about the support I got from the community. What's your favorite? Because it's going to take foot. So you're going to say anything, I'm going to put my favorites in, then you're going to go from there and do your thing with the favorites. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to send them to you tonight because, you know, if we release uh, you before... Oh, you're good. Baby, I'm going to go home on that sofa. Put me on. Thank you. How much is this? We ain't budget this. We budget we got. I think you can get those from... You can get that from, you get from Ikea. Ikea, the Dollar Tree. But we have to build something. We have to build... They put it in their room. Well, yeah. We just have to... It needs to be probably two times this, though. Two times. Okay. One, two, three. No, not really. One, two. So I need to go like look at, well, I'm going to go out as I know how to go, stuff like that. Look yeah. So this look dope behind the thing? Yeah, like I'm, this? I'm going to show you. I'm going to move it. Right oh, there. and with those chairs you tell me, those, the other ones, that yeah. Me. yeah. Let's talk about it with my baby. Like, I wanted to create a platform for myself and also for others, a part of my community that's also black and queer identifying, and just create something for us just to talk about everything that's happening in the world. Take gay out of it. Gay, HIV does not have gay tag on it. Yes, the numbers are higher in our in the gay community. I get that. But for the past five years, the, the numbers have tremendously rise in black women, especially mm -hmm. here in Atlanta. Yeah. Like it seems like these past few years, people have used social media platforms to really have a platform to speak truth to certain things, or at least their truth. My dude, your entire career is built on queers. Queers run this industry. So the people who are booking you, the people who are styling you, the people who are doing your makeup, the people who, all of the people surrounding you, securing your dancers, securing clothes, all of them people gay. Let's talk about it with my baby. Like I created that thing just to give people like myself a, a platform to talk and express their feelings. I'm more than my hair, I'm more than my wear. On LGBTQ, you cannot compare. Let's talk about drama, let's talk about facts. Let's talk about trans getting killed back to back. Let's talk about it. Real shit, real shit, let's talk about it. Real shit, real shit, let's talk about it. Real shit, real shit, let's talk about it. Real shit, big facts. It's time to grab wine and let's take a seat. The culture we talking is so unique. Opinions and shade are from a good place. Black with degrees, now that's the new wave. Let's talk about it. Real shit, real shit. Spreading love and light, just like my name. Chasing big dreams, big bags, all on the road to fame. I'm super excited to go and perform at Club 840, Woman Crush Wednesdays. Um, it's always a pleasure to, you know, just practice and practice your craft and get the nerves out. All right, y'all, so it's a weekday. I just got off from work. I'm at home in my bed watching Netflix, What's I love to do. I get a phone call, who else but Trey? He has something he wants to go do and it involves music, of course. Baby, I don't know what Gemini switch flip when we hit that door at that club, but it switched and it switched quickly. Y'all, these churn got me down to the strippers, the after hour spot. I thought I was coming to a good, wholesome, classy base. Like, we going to see Sonny perform, and child, this is where they be hunching at. They got the little, they, it's a little, they got a little, like a little dark room. And I'm like, wait a minute, is we in the right spot? It was my first time meeting Sonny and Ebony. It was, I, I would say it was my first time meeting them, but the group wasn't as 
welcoming and inviting as I thought they would be of and bringing me around and talking to me, trying to get to know me. It wasn't like that. Seeing the group at WCW, like it really gives support and really good vibes. So I'm really happy that everyone came out to support Sunny Dread and also support me in a way because I am an extension of Sunny Dread too. Hey, Mr. Drummond, if you think it's coming for me, then I'm sunny. I'm the baby sitting, go sit in the corner. I'm going to keep you some minutes for this all done. I'm the big stepper, I'm the... So, Cash comes to talk to you after his performance. How was Cash's performance, first of all? And, and then, uh, why didn't you want to talk to him? <laughs> This is also not part of my answer. I'm just laughing to get it out, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Cash. I know the question. Just give me a second. I always applaud artists for uh, being bold enough to like showcase their art unique to them. And so like, I think that it's so dope that every performer was very unique to themselves. Um, and I think everybody gave an interesting performance that fit their personality. Some of these stupid ain't mouse line Didn't expect me to pull up Guess they didn't wanna try they look Got them looking so stuck Pulled up into the roof listening to the rap shit Ain't no competition You might as well love boy mission Going hard and a boy How was Cash performance? It was a He had a very interesting personality I will say that he really put his um, personality into his performance his facial expressions were very much to get the crowd engaged and so you know I'm just I, again I applaud all artists for pursuing their art so this guy comes up to me to talk to me after the performance and I y'all I just came out to enjoy the show is that cool right but I didn't come to talk I am genuinely the person when I show up to support somebody I just come to support and enjoy the show and be, you know be in my own little corner in my own little chair just like Cinderella like you know what I'm saying so I just can we not talk business in the club like you you can hit me on Instagram you can hit me in my email you, there are multiple ways to contact me other than you know while I'm out trying to enjoy my friend's performance and just kind of enjoy myself. You know, I don't, I'm not really one to do that because I don't, I try not to do that to other people. I can get back to you, love, love, love. I can get back to you, love. So listen, I have artist friends that are peers of mine that I absolutely love watching perform. Hemingway happens to be one of them. I did not know he was performing tonight, but the moment they announced him, I was up, I was amp, I was ready because I already know him about to give a show. He's a phenomenal vocalist. He's an amazing dancer. And I, listen, that's my boy. So I'm ready. Like, tear the stage down.
as I'm performing, I'm feeling the vibes, but my mic, something kept going on with my mic. I couldn't hear myself anymore. But um, other than that, you know, the vibes gonna be the vibes. You gotta keep working through that shit. Anytime, you gotta keep going. I always love to hype Sunny Jetta because I'm just that type of person. Everyone could be quiet and I'll be the only one screaming for who I love. Like, ah, yes, you better go because that's what we need in this life. We need that people that really genuinely love us and encourage us and I'm not afraid to look a fool to do it. So yeah, so between Trey, Gemini Switch flipping, and me not really feeling so much welcome in the group, because um, and I get it because they haven't met me before, and my friend is not really introducing me as he's supposed to right now because he's going through his own thing. I was in my own world, and honestly, I didn't really pay attention to anybody' performance. <laughs> The realest in the room shines the brightest. And who's really the Mayday Muse? So finally, finally, the jam session had some success and we decided to come up with a compilation album and it's finished. We all put our work. Um, my boyfriend is also part of this project. He's also a very, very talented musician here in Atlanta now. And we're both going to be heading to the listening party. Like we have a listening party for this compilation album that we put together and it's a bunch of amazing music and I just cannot wait to walk in there and see the vibes. I got friends coming. It's going to be amazing. Theme of the song was kind of like like space and, and video games and everything that we kind of grew up on. So I wanted to be able to kind of catch that vibe and, and change it to something different. So a lot of people have said, you know, people who listen to me and people who are fans of me think that this is one of my best songs that I put out. So I did just release it, you know, recently, but I wanted to share it on this compilation album so that way people can hear it. I can catch a different audience. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So appreciate your support. And I, this is my song. Too. So the vibes of the listening party is so amazing. Honestly, these are such talented people and I'm just grateful to be part of this project. You know, a lot of people in this city have an issue with competition and trying to pin each other against each other, but we don't have to do that. Like, I know this sounds cliche, everybody's like, you don't have to do it, but for real. You honestly can, can work together, do a great project, and it turned out successful. You know, like, I think everybody's experience between this has made us grow as artists and figure out who we want to work with and who we don't and just certain things that we can do. But we all pulled something from it and pulled this together and it turned out to be really successful. Not taking accountability is a hell of a drug, but you know I'm gonna keep it a stack. Me and Brandon are meeting um, because we had a holiday party, and Brandon said some things to Trey that kind of triggered him, and I wanted to just see where Brandon stood and what his standpoint was with the whole ordeal because some things kind of got heated. Uh, man, it's been a roller coaster. 
it's been a roller coaster. I feel like I've been at theme park, amusement park. So what happened with your face though? Who scratched you up? Oh, so why I gotta be in the fight? When Trey find you? Oh. <laughs> you scraping and scratching now like a cat? Trey find your ass? <laughs> yeah. okay. When I'm asleep? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I got in a bad wreck. Very bad wreck. Um, thought I almost lost my life, man. It was, it flashed before my eyes. I, I kind of blacked out. Um, some guy, some idiot pulled out. I was, you know, driving on a straight, narrow street. And um, he pulled out and made a legal U-turn. Just this happened? Like, yeah, it just happened recently. Um, hit me, I swerved, did a 360, hit a pole, ended up in the grass, airbags popped, my face, you know, got burned on the side. So it was so, a mere life death experience. So what goes on from there? Enough, enough about me though, since we're on Trey. Um, since we're on Trey. Since we up? are on Trey. Uh, let me ask you about the situation that you, you guys had at the holiday party. What was, what was that all about? I mean, to me, I mean, it really was no situation. I mean, the motherfucker came at me sideways. He thought I... Did he say something to you first or did you say something to him? I mean, I made a comment about how he dressed. You know See, what I'm saying? Like, he looked dressed down. That's but the problem. But I, I would say it in a way that, you know, he's so, he, his style is so unique. Mm -hmm. He's always dressed over the top. You know, so because, you basically uh, said like, he dressed regular. I'm like, okay, I never seen you in this life. Basically. I heard when you said he's dressed regular. Were you saying it basically based off of? Were you saying it like I've never seen you dressed now? I, I, like I don't never see you dressed regular. You know right. What I'm like, okay. Yeah. So you weren't saying it as a shady no, not kind at of all. thing. You were saying it that you usually seeing him like dressed a little different. Exactly. exactly. Okay. He, he took it the wrong way. I, I, and many may have. You know what I'm saying? It might have came off a little. That's a little wrong, that's you know one thing with Trey though. That's a trigger with him. So last year, I was in your shoes. I had the same issue. I, I saw Trey differently. Every time I saw Trey, he was more of a, he was more dressed up, he was more dressy. Um, and when I first saw him in a, I call it a cape. Trey walks in and I see him with the cape on and the whole shebang on the head. I'm thinking to myself, hmm, okay, where is this coming from? Um, it was very metrosexual. Trey, cool. He cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I fuck with his music and shit like that, but. Do you think that? I don't like that slick shit, and I think that he took advantage of when the camera started rolling and shit. Okay. That's what he did. What was the. When it got yeah. really out of hand, when you guys got back in the house after the fire pit, what was the comment about, <laughs> what was the comment about his nose? His what? His nose. There his, was a scratch his nose? or something on his nose and you said something about his nose. You got you you probably were in the heat of the moment, but it was I a lot. I don't remember saying nothing about his nose. It was, I mean like what do you mean like playing with his nose? Like a little or just a, a little shade because I, I remember he we were talking and shit like that. And me saying something and him being in the rebuttal was like a shady type of moment. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if that was shade or he was just wiping the powder off of his nose. She was doing an apology that night, and you, and you did. But I think in the heat of the moment, he really wasn't. But I'm not gonna keep apologizing for the same shit though. So I, if, I, if it comes I, to that, I'm I not get gonna you. keep apologizing. And I don't expect you to, and I don't want you to, because I don't want you to sound like you are, like you right. actually created a problem. You know, like when I when, 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 when I know that when you're trying to play me, and you're wrong. Do you think he tried to play you? When you're wrong, yeah. You think he tried to play you? I think he tried to play me. He, 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 took, he took advantage of the fire pit. Okay. I did. And you think because the cameras were rolling. Why are you coming for me? Why okay. are you coming for me? Nigga, I ain't coming for you. So, do you think that he hyped it up because he had an audience and you were new to the I, scene? I, or? Feel like, I feel like Trey hypes everything up when he has an audience. That's just Trey, right? That's Trey. Okay. So, I'm glad that somebody else sees it. Yeah. And I'm not the only one because I felt the same exact way. Yeah. I feel like when there's an audience around, he feels like he has to defend himself against, like he, he gets offensive for everything. And everybody's not out to get you. And that's what I try to portray for it, but I was the bad guy because, you know. I mean, I tried to I mean, explain you, the same you, thing. You, 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 had, you had some moments. You had some moments. I, I, had, I, had some, I had some things where I said, some things that may have been a little more blunt or out of line, 
However, I don't feel like it was enough for a lot of stuff that was, you know, a lot of the back and forth. Right. And I don't like to do the back and forth either. Then that's when I'm going to Don't wait till you up. get an audience and then and come to me and then yeah. start doing the, the exactly. you know, the talking. Like, exactly. let's and, do and, it and together. I, and I feel like with Trey, he knew I wasn't coming at him, but he took the opportunity because he's in a group setting. So if y'all so if yeah. y'all not in a group so setting, that's, you, that's the type of shit I don't fuck with. So that's the type of shit that will get you them hands. So, so excited. I am redoing a track that I am known for doing. Now, when I go out, you know, if people have been to my shows or, or listened to my music from the beginning, like if you was like a day one, you know the song. And I get an opportunity because I'm just better and I've evolved and I have better ears. Everything has just evolved. So I get to re redo it. I'm gonna re-record it and it's gonna go on my album. I'm super excited just because I do love this song, but it just needs to sound better. You know how it is. You just need to sound better so we're gonna go in the studio today and we're gonna knock it out the park honestly you know i'll follow your lead yeah. and we can you know make it do what it do okay cool ready. i'm definitely gonna do like probably punches because okay the way just the way so that i can blend some of the stuff because there's a, like a lot of layered parts mm -hmm. just for it to make sense so um yeah uh, so I'm here with DK at Sound Resort Studio. He's gonna be my engineer today, working on this uh, track that I've been I've been excited to put out. And yeah, this is an awesome studio. It just like puts you in a vibe. Look at all the stuff on the walls, the music. It just gets me ready to record. Like every time I walk in here, I always feel good, positive vibes, and it just gives me give me hype to make some music. All right, all right, play back. Here we go. Cause I'm back again I'm sick of all the drama and screaming And pressure, get back, I swear it Yeah, I like that, and you stay in character Alright, you ready? Mm -hmm. Alright, here we go And screaming and pressure, get back, I swear it Cause it's getting way too much ah. for me uh, I, I got gotcha, you, yeah Cause it's getting way, way Cause it's getting way Uh-huh, here we go and screaming and flash up, get back, I swear it. Cause it's getting way too much for me. Just, uh, yeah, sorry, it's a lot of punches. So. Nah, it's all good. I'll just make sure you were um, coming in again. Nah, yeah. All right, play back. back. I swear it. Cause it's getting way too much for me. Yeah, I like that. All right. I'm tuning your voice out. Can't hear, baby. You ready? Mm hmm. Here we go. Swear it, cause it's getting way too much for me. I'm turning your voice out, can't hear, baby. All right. What did you say right there coming in? I'm tuning your voice out. Tuning your voice out, yeah. okay. I'm tuning your voice out, can't hear, baby. Can we clean that one up? Yeah, yeah, let's clean it up. All right, ready? Mm hmm. All right, here we go. Uh, let me start you right here. Cause it's getting way too much for me. I'm tuning your voice out, can't hear, baby. Uh. Left hand, one more time. Can't hear, can't hear, baby. Can't hear, baby. Alright, here we go. Can't hear, cause it's getting way too much for me. I'm turning your voice out, can't hear, baby. I'm turning your voice out. Alright, let's take a listen to that. Cause it's getting way too much for me. I'm turning your voice out, can't hear, baby. Right now, I'm trying to assess how I would do things differently because I recorded this song like seven years ago. So my voice has changed. I changed the music. So I'm just kind of going through little tidbits to see what would make the song better and more new and more current for sure. I'm not going to hold on to the past. All right, here we go. So leave me. I let you go because it's hard for me to breathe. I'm not going to hold on to the past I'm moving forward, never back And there's nothing to do to make you stay Ah, much better. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. uh, you want to hear that back? Yes. All right, play back. I'm not going to hold on to the past I'm moving forward, never back And there's nothing to make you stay. Yeah, I like that. Yes, sir. Okay, um, can you can you press that F on the key again one time? No, it's a good uh, the lower high. The high one. 
Okay, so that's that's why it sounds weird because that seems like it's supposed to change, but it's not. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense now. Thinking about it. Okay. Uh, so you just wanna uh, you wanna hear first and then do the uh, yeah let's let's I'm gonna punch it in in my like let's practice it for a second and then I got you punch it in. Um, all right I'm gonna start from the top so we can hear real quick. Okay. Stay on the same note. That's all I had to do. Yeah. All I had to do was stay on the same note. But that makes sense. <laughs> uh, you, you, uh, you ready? Yeah, I can put it in. All right, I'm going to you close. Okay. Here we go. Um, as I'm listening to the song, I'm just, I'm like, I can't believe how much, you know, this idea came to life from me being this brand new singer, brand new producer, to having years of experience down, you know, in, in, down the line, and I'm just glad that it's opening up. It's showing me like, yo, every everything has, has worked. I've evolved. I've you know made great music, and this is not gonna be any different. Like, it's crazy. I can't wait for people to hear it. Let me go. I feel good. Like the song sounds crazy. Uh, the new layers, just the, everything is just sounds up to date, and like it's it just rides along with my artistry. I'm excited to see where it goes. I know people are gonna be responsive, and my fans are gonna be enjoying of you know me redoing this because this is a song I was gonna give up, but I'm actually gonna redo it, put it out there, and it's gonna be dope. I'm excited. Pack your bags. I don't care no. Thirty condoms in his pocket, <laughs> and they glow in the dark. What? That cannot be good for your dick. <laughs> what the jail for what, Goofy? You be working, baby. Hey, I'm tired. If I just got a jet. I be sleep. <laughs> I just felt I always felt different. I used to think that I was adopted. <laughs> so, do you consider yourself? I'm gay, right? Being open about his sexuality on the radio, which I know he was totally caught off guard. My family is a judgmental, sometimes can be very judgmental, not knowing it. And I feel like I fall under that category as well. When I was like 20, 20 between 20 and 21, the lawyer, they live in this nice condo downtown. It was sloppy drunk. And I'm like, okay, I should just leave. It messes with you throughout your whole life. All three of us have I've been sexually abused, assaulted. Um, that's that's crazy. I don't really care what you think about me. I don't think about you at all. So DJ reaches out to me, um, he wants to meet up, and he said he wanted to talk to me about the situation that happened at Matt's house. I'm not really sure what about the situation he wants to discuss, but I'm gonna hear him out and see what he gotta say. So tonight I wanted to have a sit down conversation with my brother, Mr. Trey Morris, about his behavior at Mayday's holiday party. I didn't get to follow up with you from Friday. What was that? What was that? Because when all of the stuff went down, I went outside. All right, let, let me be clear about something. If Matt is not having a conversation with me about how I behaved in his house, why are you having a conversation with me about it? And the thing about it is this, you weren't even at the house when the original incident occurred. You came much later. So why are you addressing me about how I responded to an incident that was already in place when you walked into the environment? I'm, I'm, as my friend and as your friend, I'm not feeling your behavior right now. And all I heard was a bunch of back and forth. So what was that? A bunch of what? Back and forth. What was that? Because clearly it had been going on before I got there. So what was that? I don't know the guy. 
um, he was at the party when I got there. And, oh okay. God. He was just like making comments from the time I got there until like, I just went to hell. So when I first got there, I was just like, so nobody's gonna tell me we were dressing up. Like, kind of how you reacted when you got there in fucking pajamas. Listen, I was ready for a pajama party. That's what they told me. And so I was like, so nobody told me we were dressing up. Like, I'm in a t-shirt and some damn jeans or whatever. And so I introduced myself and he was like, yeah, you come in here looking real regular. Why? Like, what's the, why? Like, so I let it go. Being in the realm of entertainment, people are gonna say any and everything. You look too gay, you look too dark, you are fat, you are ugly, you look like you stink. Like, they are gonna say everything and you cannot respond to everything. And I don't know who started it because I was outside handling my business. So, there were a few things, that, or there was one thing in particular that was said that made me a little uncomfortable. As your friend, I'm holding you accountable because regardless of what your status is with a person, you don't come at somebody and say to them, well, who are you? As if, because the tone that I got, it was almost as if you were you were saying it was such grandeur, like you had already arrived. And I'm like, no, it's you're at my friend's house. Who the fuck are you? But at the same time, why would you even do that in someone's house? Is what I'm saying to you. Because I have that relationship with Matt. I can do that. But it's disrespectful. No, it's not. Yes, it was it disrespectful. His comments were disrespectful, DJ. And I'm not about to defend what I said. I'm not asking you to defend what you said. However, what I am saying is, if somebody were to say to you, you don't get to tell somebody who they are and who they not because you're not Trey Morris yet. You're not even who you're supposed to be. You're not get then to tell me how to respond to somebody making slick ass comments to me. As far as Trey is concerned, while I can't fault you for checking Brandon when you did, at the same time, it's when you did it. Because I personally would never invite you to my house again if you got into it at my house with anybody. That's just proper home training. Who's telling you how to respond? You just told me that what I said was out of pocket. It was, and it was disrespectful. In your perspective. And it was, and it was in someone's in house, that you, in a house that you don't pay bills for. In your perspective. No, that's what it is. I just wanted to know why Trey was getting defensive. Were you defensive because you were in the wrong, or were you defensive because you were embarrassed? My thing is, being an entertainer is more than just being talented. You have to be talented and you have to be teachable. And everywhere you go, somebody is gonna hate on you. Somebody's always going to have something to say. But you'll never see Beyonce address none of that shit. You'll never see Mariah Carey address none of that shit. Grace Jones never addresses any of that shit. Like, just let the shit roll off. Like, apparently you were bothered by what he said. So apparently you sit up here trying to go back and forth with me and you feel in some type of way. But as your friend and as someone who cares about you and as someone who wants to see you win, I'ma hold your ass accountable every single time you step out of line. Okay, well let's call Matt. Let's call him. If he didn't take it as disrespectful, then that's him. I know he didn't. Okay, so he's not answering the phone. And I know that my friend wasn't offended by what I said because we proceeded to have a great, a great time. He called me and told me to come back. I didn't say your friend was dis was offended by what you said. What I'm simply speaking on is you don't get to tell somebody because, like I said, the t it's not necessarily what you said. Uh, no, I take that back. It is what you said. It's what you said, but it's also the tone in which what you in which what was said was said. You don't get that's to, you don't, that's like you, that's like you literally going up to somebody that's like, I'm Trey Morris, and no, you are, not. like that's the tone no, that I got. Not. Like who? No, it's not. Yes. No, it's not. Like you don't get to say to somebody, well, who are you, as if to say that you've made it. Baby, humble yourself because you never know when the first shall be last and the last shall be first. You don't know who you sitting next to. And to be quite honest, if somebody were to come and say, well, who the fuck is Trey Morris? You'd be offended because to be completely honest, Trey Morris isn't even Trey Morris yet. Oh, everybody in that room, everybody in that room has rapport with everybody else in that room except for him. So me asking who are you is not disrespectful in the slightest. We all have rapport with one another. You don't have that. I'm really annoyed that he's sitting here trying to chastise me 
about my behavior like a child. I know what I did. I chose to do it, and I would do it again. Matt ain't got no issue with what the fuck I did, so why you got a problem? At the end of the night, I'm starting to feel a little worse than I started when I first got there because my head's hurting. And at the end of the day, I'm not about to tell no grown person how to conduct themselves if they don't see nothing wrong with how they move. But I will tell you, at this point, I've said my two cents to Trey, and when I see Brandon, we're gonna have a conversation too. I'm the one to watch because it's lights, camera, action, and the talent is top notch. Today we are meeting at the Social House Atlanta where we're going to discuss our goals for 2022 as well as reflect on 2021. Yes. It's our year, we have to do it. Hell yeah, yeah, it's great <laughs> that, uh, that partnership, you know what I'm saying, as well as connecting together. So this is... I guess my notebook of auditions. I know I don't think I ever showed you this. Oh dang! Great. Yeah, I, I wrote down did. every 2020 and 2021. I wrote down every audition I've ever had, as long as well as the date, casting director, and the status of that audition. Well, combined, I would say I've had over 500 auditions mm -hmm. in the past two years. It, it honestly makes me feel so good to know that she has ambition drive and that she has something that she really loves to do and this is this is what she's destined to do you know what I'm saying and so to see her have those pages it honestly inspires me and give me that fuel and that fire to just be as great as her you know what I mean like geez yeah, yeah, my baby a winner. Like, I can't, I can't be caught lacking in no way. Uh, about me, me, what I want to do is perform more. I want to, I'm gonna write that down. I want to buckle down on as far as like the uh, open mics here in Atlanta. So that, and I need to focus on putting the album out. Uh, yes, your album. I keep forgetting it's not out because I've heard it many times. It's very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, baby. Thank you. Let's drink to that one. You know what I'm saying? Highly recommended. Mm -hmm. I feel like Sunny's goals are very attainable, very doable. It's just a matter of just no. planning it. I don't want to settle at all for this project. No settling. Yeah, <laughs> and but the only thing that's preventing all of this stuff is the funding. It's like, how the hell are we gonna come up with this budget to execute this shit? I'm gonna be honest with you, I feel like it's at least 10K. You think that's a 10K idea? Based on the vision, based on the quality that I know that you want, like it would probably be at least 10K. But it's I, I think, so then yeah, 10K. What do you think about, you know what I'm saying, the, you know, the group of the, um, on the way up Atlanta, you know, Mark and Trey, how do you feel about everybody? So I've met some of these people before, and I think they're, they're really nice. I think everyone is super talented and really cool. I fucking yeah. love Trey. I want to actually work with Trey and then some one day, you know what I'm saying? Well, maybe Whenever we could put the... Know it. We put that on, put that yeah, on 2022. Put that in the and I want to work on Mark too, also, because uh, I didn't even know he I'm did. I'm going to work with Mark. You going to work with Mark? Yeah. Well, I mean, um, he showed me a script that he's working on, and oh. I didn't even know he did any film, so he asked me directly to like be in it. So They're a little more spicy than what I used to. <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean anything, honestly. Like, that's fine. That's cool with me. I was just taken aback <laughs> when we went to meet up with some of them, and it was like the first day. Yeah, <laughs> we felt Whatever. the tension as soon as we walked in. I was like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> "Did we just yeah. step in the in the kitchen where it's hot at? <laughs> what did I get myself into?" That's what I was thinking. Don't put me in that shit. <laughs> Don't put me in that shit. <laughs> That's one thing I'm that. not from the stand for, so hell yeah. I, I love peace in my <laughs> life, so it was more so like, damn, they are really arguing. They're in a real tough, you know what I'm saying, discussion right now. Yeah. But hey, what's a, what's a show without drama, huh?
I know you love the drama of On The Way Up Atlanta, but are you tired of the drama in your real life? If so, you need to follow me on TikTok. Ginez44 on TikTok, where I'm helping people to change their lives. You are the creator of your experience. It's time! <laughs> I don't need to sit at your table. We building one. Money comes to me easily. Money comes to me fast. From the time that I had the vision to the moment when I got the keys, it only took 27 days to manifest this car. You can keep your blanket and your pillow, bitch, cause I'm finna round. Do you feel like money is the root of all evil? Imagine if someone felt that way about you. How often would you show up in their life? Help me. Of course, but just admit you were wrong. I, mm -mm, I the ice. You have nothing to lose, and you might just change your life. You're welcome. Where were you on Saturday for said show? At the holiday party, I let it be known that I was doing a show this past Saturday, and everybody, Trey included, seemed to be all gun ho to be present. And I asked Trey what the reason was that he didn't come to my show and Trey literally paused for a good 30 seconds and was just seemingly trying to come up with an excuse. And in my mind, I'm thinking, we're waiting, we're waiting, and we're waiting. It just seems like if it's not about Trey, he ain't really for it. You would put me your fucking video at somebody else's house woman? But I mean, but... And then I don't know if y'all caught it, but in the Mexican restaurant, he said his video release party. <laughs> like, What's this happened on, before man? you got to my video release party. <laughs> so it's all about Trey. Trey, Trey, Trey. That's, that's all I'm saying. All right, all right. How do you spell Jai here? J A I R E? I was working Saturday night. I'll call him later. You said you were what? I was working, because I was supposed to go to the gala, but I ended up not going. So I want to do something. Um, you, Matt, and I should do something. I don't know, maybe something like a Dons of R&B something. Like, it should be a show show, like a showcase show. Well, if not the Dons of R&B, hell, you just call it a triad. A triangle, a triangle, a threesome. I mean, hell, just do it. I'm not doing this with you. But no, seriously, I think we should do it. And because you have music, I have music. Well, has music. mine has to go through a manager now. So I have to share something with you. I haven't told a lot of people. Well, I really haven't shared it with too many people at all. Um, I recently got signed to a manager deal. So, um, right. So if you haven't noticed, all of my music is down. Um, so I did album, notice that I was looking for um, Vintage Love the other day. The album is gone. Um, so I'm in the process of recording new music. Um, we got some other plans that I can't really discuss at the moment, but it would have to go through my manager. So I can't commit until I know, until I get my music recorded. Did you have somebody look over the paperwork? Like, I had a lawyer do it. Trey begins to tell me that he signed with this new management company, and I have to be completely honest, I'm really excited for my friend, because if anybody deserves to be successful, it's him. However, as my friend, it is also my job to protect you, and because we have seen in previous instances with Trey where he has gotten screwed over because of the fine print, I wanted to make sure that you actually had a real entertainment lawyer look over your contract. There's a major difference, and this is where a lot of artists mess up. They get these contracts and they try to have the family attorney or a real estate attorney look over a contract. You specifically need an entertainment lawyer or an entertainment attorney looking over your paperwork so they can ensure that you're not falling into any pitfalls and making sure that you actually get to see your money. Come on, don't do that. No, like, don't do that. No, I'm serious. Like, did you have a real? I had a lawyer. Attorney? I had a lawyer look over the paperwork. Not I got the, not the family attorney. No, a baby. I had attorney. DJ. Throughout the entire sit down, I just kind of got that Trey was just 
he was just there. He was just kind of, he would rather be somewhere else doing something else with someone else. And I'm cool with that. However, as I stated, I needed to have a sit down conversation and I'm not one to go on social media and post my shit. If I got something to say to you, I'm gonna say it to your face. So I decided to have a sit down and now we're here. Next time on On The Way Up Atlanta. Everybody else was in our team. You gonna let me say what it is? You just say everybody else was in our stuff. So are we didn't have a conversation. Are you going to let me answer the question or not? I'll let you answer. Go ahead. All right. Brandon, this is Kamori. 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 I'm sorry. How are you? Bring your friends. Hello, good morning. How are you? How are you? We all know Trey, and then well, Nebraska doesn't know Trey. Hi, I'm also Trey. I'm Trey, and this is Kamori, Trey's friend. How are you? Since DJ and of course, we met the business. <laughs>